Hi, Rite friends. Welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we're just going to relax a little bit and have some fun talking about elephants in the ancient world. There's actually quite a lot one could say about this topic, and as always, this video is not going to be comprehensive. What I have decided to do is to take a look at some scientific adjacent writings that are about elephants to try to get an idea of what did ancient people think about elephants. So the two authors that I'm using are Aelian and Pliny. So Aelian wrote a long work that is basically a compendium of all of the facts that he knew about all of the animals that he knew. Are all of these facts accurate? Absolutely not. Are they interesting and entertaining? Yes. So we're going to have a lot of fun looking at that. And similarly, Pliny wrote a long work about natural history. And so animals make up a good chunk of that. And so we're going to be looking at some passages from there as well. So without further ado, let's get reading. The people of India heal the wounds of elephants. Remedies for sick elephants which they have captured in the following manner. They foment them with warm water, just as Patroclus fomented the wound of Eurypolis in our noble Homer, and then anoint them with butter. If they are deep, the wounds, that is, uh, they reduce the inflammation by applying and laying on them pig's flesh, hot and with the blood still in it. Their ophthalmia they treat by warming some cow's milk and pouring it into their eyes. And the elephants open their eyelids and are gratified, just as men are, to perceive what benefit they derive. And the Indians continue the bathing until the inflammation ceases. This is evidence that the ophthalmia has been arrested. As for other diseases that afflict them, blocka wine is the cure for them. If this medicine does not rid them of their complaint, then nothing will save them. So there you have some lovely medical advice on how to treat elephants. It sounds really bizarre. If any of you out there are veterinarians, I would love to hear if any of this is at all valid. The next passage is maybe my favorite. It's so cute. It's about how much elephants love flowers. And these tame elephants go out to gather flowers for themselves, for they love a sweet smell and are led to the meadows to be trained by the most fragrant scent. And an elephant, using its sense of smell, will pick out a flower while the trainer, basket in hand, holds it out beneath the picker as he throws it in. Later, when it has filled the basket, like a fruit gatherer, it has a bath and takes as much pleasure in the bath as the more luxurious of mankind do. Then, on its return, it wants the flowers, and if the keeper delays, it trumpets and refuses food until somebody brings it the flowers it has gathered. Then it picks them out of the basket with its trunk and sprinkles them along the rim of its manger, for it regards them as imparting a flavor, as it were, to its food by means of their scent. And it scatters a quantity of flowers over its stall as it desires a fragrant sleep. It seems that Indian elephants are nine cubits high and five wide, and the largest are those they call Prasian. Last but not least, we're going to talk about elephants and romance, and because this is classics in color, we're going to throw in the passage about elephants and bestiality as well. Elephants know nothing of adultery, nor is there that fighting over females which is so destructive to other animals, but this is not because they lack the power of love. After all, it is said that an elephant once fell in love with a woman who sold garlands in Egypt. And lest anyone think the elephant had chosen a common sort, this woman was also greatly admired by the famous scholar Aristophanes. Another elephant is said to have fallen in love with a young man from Syracuse named Menander who served in Ptolemy's army. Whenever he was prevented from seeing his beloved, the elephant showed how much he missed him by refusing to eat. Juba too records that a woman who sold perfume was loved by an elephant. All of these elephants showed the signs of love, delight in seeing the beloved, clumsy caresses, dropping coins given them by the public into their beloved's lap. Nor is it surprising that these animals should experience love since they also have a memory. 
So that passage is a while. There is so much going on there. First off, we see the tendency that is common, not just in Ilion or not just with elephants, but throughout ancient literature, actually, that an animal being in love with a human is a sign of that animal's superiority. So only the best animals are attracted to humans because only the best animals are smart enough or noble enough to recognize how superior humans are. Uh, so we get the indication that elephants are special because they have a memory and because they can recognize qualities like beauty. They're not just interested in any old ugly humans, they want the best humans, the humans that other humans recognize as being the most attractive and desirable. So that is interesting. And then two, I love the list of proofs that he gives. These elephants were in love with humans, that they are caressing them, and two, that they are giving them coins. I guess the idea is they're giving them gifts, and that's something you do when you're attracted to people uh, sometimes, I guess. So this is a very strange but interesting passage. Thank you so much for checking out this video and also for your support of this channel all year. Thank you so much to patrons and to subscribers especially. And I hope you're enjoying your holiday. I hope you're basking in a nice food coma. And I hope I will see you all again next week. Karate.